Hello, David. Hey. Hi. Uh, so thank you so much for being with us tonight. Or it's still the morning for you, right? Because I think you're based on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We haven't. Uh, we have our first meeting. Uh, we're going to plan our next two weeks of Glide development in 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Our first Very meeting of the day. Very interesting. I hope maybe you'll give up, uh, give us a glimpse of this. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm in a very suggestible state before this meeting. So if you can get your feature requests in, there's a good <laughs> chance that I'll bring them to the meeting. Perfect. It's the perfect timing. OK, so we have many questions. So let's let's get straight to it. Sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit the, the backstory of Glide and how it came to life, how you, you get the ID? Sure. Um, so my co-founders and I, Glide was started by four people, and we've all worked together uh, for at least six years. And some of us have known each other much longer. Um, we all worked together at a company that made tools for building mobile apps. And uh, the, the people who would use these tools, the tools were for developers. Um, they were very similar to any other tool for building an app, which meant that you would use code. You'd have to be a programmer to, to use them. And we just felt this sense of, I don't know if it's tragedy or missed opportunity or frustration. Maybe that's one of the good, that's one of the emotions we definitely felt. We just felt frustrated for about four or five years of working on these tools and how difficult they were to use and just how difficult the fundamental problem of creating apps and software was. And um, just the, the kind of the machinations you would have to go through to produce a simple app, the things that you would have to do at a low level that had nothing to do with your idea or your problem um, really frustrated us, and me especially as a designer. Um, so. Uh, because I was the head of design for this company, so it was my responsibility to design the tools and try to make it easy, but uh, the problem itself, the fundamental problem, was so complex. And in the later stages of this company, we got into more of the software life cycle, it's called. So what, do you, what kind of tools do you need to deal with software after you've written the code? How do you distribute apps? How do you test them? How do you update them? Um, that was all really messy, too. So just end to end, it was this very unpleasant experience. But at the same time, software is so important to us as a society. And its future is very bright. Uh, we're going to just have more and more software. And um, so yeah, we were just very curious about this problem. And we're all technical, the founders, we're engineers. So we also just have this love of creating software. And uh, we just wanted to share that with more people. It's just, it's really magical to sit at a computer just with your idea and spend some time. And then you have this new artifact in the world that you can share with people that communicates mm -hmm. an idea or helps them solve a problem or uh, maybe just tells them a story. Uh, it's very, it's fascinating, powerful medium. Um, so I think that was the sort of the emotional uh, foundation. And uh, my co-founder, Mark, and I, we, the, the sort of the, the straw that broke the camel's back, the thing that really determined that we would just go try to build a company was we were working together at Microsoft and we started a little open source project to help uh, developers automate uh, part of the app development process by generating code from data. So, um, for example, if you're building a, an app to catch Pokemon on the server, you're going to have a list of all the Pokemon. And the app is going to download the Pokemon from the server and show them on a map or on a list or something like that. So we built an open source project called QuickType that can generate a lot of the code for doing that in an automatic way. And uh, we just had so much fun together working on this concept. Uh, and we were interested to see where we could take it. So we just decided before we knew about Glide as a concept, we said we need to go do a company. Um, and these, these are the kind of uh, skills we're working with and the, what we've built so far, how can we sort of mutate this into uh, something we could work on for a decade, for example. And uh, we changed QuickType so that uh, originally QuickType took data in the form of JSON um, and it produced uh, code in about 15 different programming languages. And we replaced the code with a screen. So we said, okay, instead of generating code for programmers, let's generate layouts 
that programmers can put directly into their app. And then on the input side, um, we replace this data format called JSON that developers recognize, but normal people, it, it looks quite intimidating. We replace that with a Google Sheet. So you pick a Google Sheet and you get a screen um, that looks like an application. And again, Pokemon was one of our earliest examples. Mm -hmm. um, you just would pick a Google Sheet with a list of Pokemon, and then you would get something that looked like an iOS app. And we shared this with people. At first, we shared it with developers. And we said, is this useful to you? Do you want to take some data and just automatically get a component that you put into your code base as a developer to simplify building sort of data-oriented mobile screens? And no one was interested in it. And then we showed it to normal people, um, people who don't build apps already. And they said things like, you mean I can have an employee directory on my phone? You mean I can have a list of inventory in our store? I have all this information in spreadsheets that I can't look at on my phone. This is very interesting to me. This is very useful. Um, so that inspired us to keep investigating what would eventually become Glide. OK, was it for the mobile? Uh, you saw the use case of the mobile? or Because originally, I guess, what you were saying is that it wasn't intentionally for mobile directly. Um, so we started with mobile because uh, for kind of a, a simple reason and that there's enough space on your laptop to draw a mobile uh, preview right in the middle of it. And um, so it made it, it made it easy for us to build a tool where we could sort of preview a mobile phone when we're working on our computers. Um, obviously, if you're designing a website, showing your website as you design it on your computer doesn't leave much room for other things. Mm. Um, and another reason is that uh, we could think, we, we had a very simplified idea of how to automatically lay out a mobile app as just a stack of components. Um, we haven't spent much time thinking about how we would automatically do a two-dimensional layout for a large screen. Um, so yeah, we could, we could represent it very easily and show it to people in a way that was very cute and immediately graspable. And we could write an algorithm that would automatically lay it out. Um, that was one of the okay. keys to, and still is a key to Glide, is that when you first give it your data, Glide will just create an app that's full of your data and represents it by default. So you can see it right away, and then you customize it. Cool. And so we're getting to the to the subject now because all the people we've invited tonight have built apps related to the current pandemic. Um, yeah. Did you expect that the tool you built and you're building could have such an impact on a crisis like this? Did you expect like this kind of this this type of use cases? Well, I definitely didn't expect the pandemic. <laughs> so uh, therefore, I did not expect uh, the cloud would be useful during one. Um, but we actually did see some early signs that Glide could be useful in situations like this. Um, so one of the first apps built with Glide uh, back in the, the first few months of its life um, was built by a police officer in California, a sheriff actually. Um, there was a storm approaching their county and they had to do a bunch of road closures and they wanted to communicate a lot of information. So a sheriff who is not technical at all in like one day's notice, built a Glide app all about the storm and distributed it to like 40,000 citizens. So we'd never seen anyone do that with apps before because um, traditionally, you know, if you're just gonna build an app with code and put it in the app store, if you told me that in one month, you could take an idea to get into the app store in one month, I would bet that you couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, that would be extremely impressive to do that within one month. So to do it in one day and actually get it out to all of those people, um, starting with someone who has no knowledge about doing this and has never done it before was obviously a, a revolution. Yeah. Um, so we didn't really know how to interpret that because it was so different from how we've seen apps and software in general used before. Um, but since the pandemic, we have been using this term, at least internally, calling them emergency apps. And uh, Glide is not intended to be uh, a platform just for emergencies, but uh, we think that it proves some of the decisions we've made about how the apps are constructed. So if under pressure, someone with no knowledge about building an app can build one in an emergency to help people, then 
uh, we think we're making a lot of the right decisions about um, how software gets constructed in general. Okay. Um, so all the people we've invited are, uh, are based in, uh, in Europe or in France mostly. Yeah. So it's all related. I was wondering what, what are the most interesting apps you've seen like related to the, the pandemic uh, in the US? Sure. In the U.S. specifically, um, yeah, or in the world, I guess, but outside of the. So we we, we made an app to collect all of these apps that we asked just people on our community forum. Um, we have a community forum where people sort of brainstorm and help each other. It's probably a very small sliver. Well, in fact, I know it's a very small sliver of our active developer base. So we've collected, I think, about a hundred apps just on our forum that were made for the crisis. So there's surely thousands of them. Um, most of which we haven't even seen. Um, but I think some that impressed me most, the ones that we saw right off the bat were small communities making their own resource apps, mostly focused on where people could get supplies and take out food. Um, so you can think of this as like a Yelp focused just on your small town uh, that features the, the local businesses there and gives you specific uh, and real-time information, um, or not real-time, but very frequently updated information about you know where you can get dinner, and uh, so we, we were just very excited and, and proud of that use case. Um, then some people take that to the next level and they actually build in ordering, uh, so you can you can pay with a credit card uh, to buy a meal. Um, that's those features in Glide are still quite early, um, so. We've seen some of that, but we do have a long way to go to make those features more capable for situations like this. But um, yeah, I would say these these apps built for small communities um, where people are collaborating and um, you know helping each other in, in time of need. That's been the best we've seen. Okay. Uh, specifically, I have, there's some cases where we like interview people to get more details. But this one woman in the UK made an app again on like two days' notice. Uh, someone who'd never made an app before built an app to collect donations in her community to help a, whim, a women and children's center that was about to go into lockdown. And they had additional security concerns uh, because they need to keep the location of this place secret and the, the identities of the people there secret. So this app helped her accomplish that. Uh, so we found that just really remarkable. Okay. Stan, do you have a question? I, I have a many, I have a lot of questions, but maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna keep one. Up. Yeah, I'm gonna keep one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the like your favorite app uh, ever made on Glide app? Do you have one? Say like. Um, <laughs> I, have a, I do have a favorite, but it's kind of selfish. Uh, so I'll tell you the selfish one, and then I'll sort of generalize uh, to the larger story. So it's actually an app I made. Basically, uh, it's called. App? No, I do like that one. Yeah, the, it's not that one though. Um, unfortunately, we're not biking to the office very much anymore, so that app is uh, not used very much. Um, but we have an app. It was one of the first we ever made, and I I work on it all the time, and I use it many times a day. And it's called Inside Glide. And this is a private app just for our company that just has all the information about Glide. So how many people are developing apps? How many people are using apps? What are the most popular apps? Which apps are being open the most despite how many users they have? It's sort of like a little app store. Um, and plans, you know, what, what do we need to do in the next uh, six months and how, how much progress are we making? What does our business look like? Uh, what are some ideas that anyone on the team might have? Is it anyone's birthday this week? It will pop up a picture of our, our colleagues on their birthday. Um, yesterday, we hit a business milestone, and it showed some special gifts that I had programmed to, to, to show you know, money raining down when we got to this certain level. Um, so that's definitely my favorite. I, I feel a little bit guilty that it's not an inspiring, altruistic <laughs> customer story. <laughs> no, but it's very useful for you. So, in general, the apps that get me really excited, we call them dark apps. And these are apps that are made privately uh, for businesses or organizations in general. Um, so if you a food processing plant might make an app for their 50 employees who don't have desks and don't have computers issued by the company, but now they all have on their phone the ability to call the manager, report issues, take pictures of things that are happening in the plant. Um, usually the more mundane 
the better. So when I see an app for, you know, managing shipping, I guess that's not mundane. That's actually pretty fascinating, but um, sort of like these low level unsexy, let's call them mm -hmm. the unsexy use cases uh, mm -hmm. that are private to businesses. Um, I, I just love seeing that because I love the idea that people who might not never have had software even to deal with these problems now have a, a quite good looking mobile app right in their phone, making everything easier. And I hope it makes their, their job more enjoyable. And what, what is the app, the more like open it? Do you have this, do you have the name? I'm sorry? Do you have the name of the app, the more open it? That is the uh, most opened. Oh, the most open app. Um, yes. Well, that 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 is a highly dynamic list um, because I think there's just a lot of apps that are being opened all the time. Um, uh, the list that moves less less quickly is the most popular apps, and I believe our most popular app is French right now. Um, okay. And but yeah, we have a lot of French apps in our top 100. We 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 have just a list of the top 100. Okay. We occasionally look at them, um, and a lot of them are related to the pandemic right now. Maybe en mode confiné. Maybe it's one of the yeah, yeah it's up there. <laughs> what? Um, how many? About how many uh, apps there have been built so far? Do you have a rough estimate? I mean, I guess you have uh, the exact I, number, but I have the exact number. I'm not going to share that. Uh, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we can just we can say for sure. The, We, we benchmark a little bit about this company we worked at before that helped people build apps, and it's pretty remarkable how much more impact we've, we've created with Glide than at our previous company. But um, it's a lot of apps are being built okay. with Glide. And the, one of the fascinating things is uh, people build many apps. So um, hmm. <laughs> it's also not something we anticipated. So for example, if you look at like a website builder like Squarespace, um, An individual man, might make one website, um, but something about the way Glide apps are constructed, uh, people get really eager to create more. Um, mm. So we see an individual person sometimes building five, 10, 15 apps. Um, I don't have a really good understanding of why people are compelled to create so many. Um, Well, I guess it's I so it's easy to use. The, it's like so. Yeah, it's, like it's more than ideas. Easy to use. And it's, One of the heuristics I've always used for designing developer tools and thinking about technology is like, can you can you program in the shower? Is what I call it. And what I mean by that is, if your software uh, if your software is constructed from concepts that are sort of uh, comprehensible and apparent, then people can load them in their imagination, and when they're not at their computer, they can sort of use the software. And I think spreadsheets have this property. You can brainstorm while you're walking down the street about how you might solve a problem with the spreadsheet by kind of imagining the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Glide has a little bit of this uh, portable quality where it can sort of get in your mind and you can and you can work on apps uh, in your imagination. So uh, I think people are doing that. They're looking for problems in the world. And when they encounter a problem, they can start to understand how they would solve it with Glide while they're not using Glide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay, last last question, and then we'll let you go to your meeting. Um, so it's actually kind of related. Uh, we'd, we'd like to know if you can share with us some insights about uh, the roadmap, what's coming next. Roadmap, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we pick our roadmap and sort of uh, every six months, the whole team gets together. Uh, this will be the third time we're doing it. Um, the company's about a year and a half old. Um, We get together and we plan six months of work by picking a few very large projects that we're going to do. Um, so the data editor was one of the really large projects in the last six months of showing you your data in Glide and letting you create these computed columns. Yeah. Um, and we are having that meeting in about three or four weeks. Um, so yeah, it's, it's to be determined what we do there. Um, Glide's growing, growing very quickly, so we have to do some things earlier than we expect to in terms of making our, our platform more scalable, more um, uh, 
reliable. It's pretty reliable now, but we're, we're definitely going through growing print, growing pains. We, we had to deploy a pretty significant change in infrastructure. Like luckily we did it right before the pandemic. Um, so just to make glide apps load faster around the world, so they don't have to refer to a server in the United States to open, for example. Hmm. Um, but in the short term, we have tablet and uh, web or tablet and desktop layouts okay. uh, coming very soon. Uh, and we plan to make those freely available uh, for a temporary amount of time to help with all of the emergency apps right now. Uh, but uh, those, those layouts, tablet layout, for example, will probably be on one of our paid tiers. Um, so that, that will be, that'll be pretty consequential. Uh, another thing that we're thinking a lot about is app stores. Um, <laughs> we, it's not one of our top features, but it is very popular. And, people are asking um, a lot. People ask a lot about it. I'm very interested. I think we definitely should let people publish app stores. We should let people publish software wherever they'd like to publish it, um, especially if they'll pay us. Um, but I'm very interested to see what happens with that because most people who would like to publish to an app store will never do it um, mm. because the app store won't find their app relevant or uh, they don't understand there are some costs involved to publishing to an app store and they don't want to mm. pay at all. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, we, we have a, a survey. We ask people who are interested in publishing the app store to fill out. And I would say 80% of the people who fill that out, I know immediately that they would never complete their app and Apple would never uh, allow it, for example. Mm. Um, but even 20% of the demand we've seen so far would probably be pretty considerable. So we, it also simplifies the story. It's weird to talk about apps and not have a, an app store option. Uh, yeah. Sounds like a contradiction. But yeah, that, that's one of the major areas of focus. Um, and another one is just improving our programming model. Um, so Glide has a programming model that's inspired by spreadsheets that adds some things on top of it. Uh, so a concept we just shipped last week is called user-specific columns, um, which lets you say that this column in this sheet uh, is going to have different values for everyone who logs in. So you can implement liking or favoriting or personal notes, for example. So we're looking to add more concepts like that that seem like incremental extensions to what a spreadsheet is that let people build sort of complex uh, apps. So for example, we don't really have a, a good theory of actions yet. Like how do I make a button in a Glide app that every time I press it, it's gonna add a number to a cell. Um, you can't do that in Glide yet, but that seems like it should be fundamental. So I think that will be one of our major explorations uh, in the medium term. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for, for all this, for sharing this and being here with thank us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Ha very much. Have, have a good day. And well, we hope uh, to we'll we'll be looking for all those uh, new features and all yeah. this. Yeah, take care, Thank guys. You. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.